So we are going to go through today the 10 do's and don'ts of K-12 e-learning. The first do is do your homework. The last thing you will hear from us today is that we are the perfect fit for you. We don't know that. What we have to do is explore the opportunities that exist for you. You have to understand the opportunities that we may have available for you. And then we can decide together whether or not we're a fit. So when it comes to doing our homework, we want to make sure that we have a partner that offers deep content. We'll talk about that in a moment. Make sure that we offer you the flexibility to use the e-learning platform in the way that fits best for you. We want it to be engaging to your students. We want it to be a resource after COVID. This is going to end. I know it doesn't seem like it, but this will end. We will be back in the classroom. And we want to make sure that the partner we choose is somebody that can add value, not just today when our students aren't at school, but starting hopefully next September, maybe even sooner when students are returning to their classrooms. So we have to look a little bit longer term than just how do we get through the end of the school year. And we want to offer a comprehensive approach. And what we mean by that is we combine presentations. Those can be classroom presentations. Those can be video presentations. Those can be e-learning presentations. With hands-on or simulated investigations, simulations, practical tasks, which becomes a little more difficult when students aren't in the classroom, but we're gonna talk about that. And we wanna make sure that we can assess our students' progress and performance so that we can customize the learning experience to those students and make sure that the system works as efficiently as it can for their teachers. I'm just going to go for one of those 18 suppliers and walk through to give you a sense for the amount of content. See if a couple of things jump out at you that you're teaching now in your classroom that might be able to be integrated into that course structure for your students. Everything from scientific investigation and reasoning, earth and space science, physical science like atomic structure and energy, life sciences, cell biology, and ecosystems, scientific processes, earth systems, matter, forces in motion, energy, electricity and magnetism, including electrostatics, electromagnetism, building and testing circuits, waves, we'll come back to waves a little bit later, nuclear physics, chemical reactions, chemical structure, anatomy, evolution and genetics, we're about halfway through, Bio biochemistry and cell biology, the living world, then we get into STEM with engineering design, green technologies, electronics, fluid power, construction, transportation, agriculture, robotics. <clears throat> and it's not necessarily just STEM in the traditional way that we think about it. We have a ton of VLA content as well. Here's a whole section on English language, another section on mathematics, information technology, and so on. So I'm sure as we flash through those slides that there were a couple of things that jumped out at you that said, hey, those are things that I'm teaching in my class. How could I use this e-learning platform to expand and to enhance the experience that my student has? The second one is a don't, and that is don't, please don't make students sit through hours of online lectures. I'd like to introduce you at this time to the first grade class at McKinley Elementary School in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin for the year 1975 and 1976. There was a student in that class that had a hard time sitting still. There was a student in that, in that class that the teacher called hyperactive, that the teacher called rambunctious, that had a really hard time sitting and listening to the teacher lecture from a chalkboard. That was this student. That student is me. And so I know firsthand the value of hands-on skills and being a hands-on kinesthetic learner because that is me. And those are the students we have to worry most about when we start thinking about e-learning and putting them in front of a computer and what are we offering. So we want to make sure that we give them a combination of interaction with their teacher, maybe some lecturing, but also plenty of opportunity to explore and investigate and perform simulated hands-on skills on their own schedule and at their own time. And it looks like this for elementary school, fairly simple. It gets a little bit more complex when we get into middle school and the same thing for high school. But what we want to do is make sure that we have that active learning approach that we talked about, presentations, investigations, simulations, and assessments and do it in a way that keeps our students engaged, whether that's at the elementary level, the middle school level, or the high school level. So the next is a don't. Don't, please don't think e-learning replaces the teacher. We get this question a lot. If we're moving to e-learning, does that mean that the teacher is no, no longer important? I would argue that in an e-learning environment, the teacher becomes more important and the teacher's role in making sure that the content matches the student and that the content matches the, the course structure and the students are staying engaged and that we use e-learning as an aid, not as the method and the methodology for delivering all of the learning. So to give you an example, this is a page out of our e-learning platform. Uh, it's an introduction to what is an element. 
that entire presentation can be downloaded as a PowerPoint. The teacher can modify it the way that they want to. They can deliver from that content. They can deliver from their own content. They can use the content in any way that they want to. They can make changes. They can add or delete slides or ignore that entire theory part of the e-learning platform and just use e-learning for the hands-on skills and assessments. Again, going back to our active learning process, this presentations part can be delivered a whole number of different ways. What's important is that we create enrichment activities for students so that they're not just watching a video and submitting a response, but that they're actively engaging with their learning. The next item is a do. It says do start with course sections and align accordingly. We get the question a lot of times from teachers that say, well, you're just going to take your e-learning content and turn that into my course. I don't want to turn my course content on end to accommodate e-learning. The answer is that if somebody's telling you you have to do that, that's probably not the best partner. The, the relationship should work the other way around. We should take a look at your course content and find a way to use e-learning to enhance that content, especially in an environment where students are working from home like they are today. So let's take a look at that. Just to show you that this can work, I randomly, and I literally randomly went online and I typed in science uh, syllabus middle school. And this is what came up. It's a syllabus actually from the state of Tennessee. And if I blow this part out, you can see that there is a section on motion and stability, forces, forces and interactions, waves and their applications. Well, let's say that we wanted to find an opportunity to teach that waves and applications and provide some hands-on experiences and utilize e-learning to deliver just that part of the course content. We can go over to the learning management system and in that learning management system, there's a, there's a search box. You'll see it up there at the top. And I can go into that search box and I can type waves. And when, from waves, I'll get a whole list of every single course and every single lesson that has waves as part of its content. I can launch that content. And sure enough, we have a whole section on the applications of waves. We can do that with literally any topic. And again, it's not replacing the course structure. It's finding ways to enhance what the students are already learning using the e-learning content. From there, we can create custom courses. So rather than just having a cookie cutter approach and saying, here's the e-learning course, we can go into the LMS and we can select the areas of the LMS, the areas, the courses, the lessons that we want to build our course structure around and create a custom course so that when our student launches the content, they go into that custom course, course and we can assign to them just those skills or just those activities that we want them to see. Fully customized, fully aligned, to your individual course structure. The next one is another do. Leverage the crosswalks that you've already done to standards. For example, if you have already crosswalked your content to next gen science standards, it's really, really easy to figure out how the e-learning content can match your content. But what we do, and we're doing it a little bit in reverse here, but we can go over and we can pick a course or a lesson, and then we can go to the right and select next gen. And what will come up is a list of the next generation science standards that align to that coursework. And we can do that not just for next gen, but, a, but for a variety of standards. So if you know where your standards, where your course content matches the standard, we can back into where that standard matches the e-learning and really, really easily create a custom course for your students that matches what you're already teaching. Not asking you to change your content, but finding ways to enhance it using e-learning. Do integrate simulation. Now there's some debate about who came up with the next quote. Some people say it was Confucius. Some people say that one of his protégés 300 years later came up with it. Somebody, some people say that 900 years after that, it was Ben Franklin, but it's a quote that I love. And the quote goes like this, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. This quote is important to me because it's the way I learn. Tell me and I forget. If I sat in a classroom and listened, I, I, not a lot stuck. Teach me, demonstrate it, let me see it, and I can start to learn it. I might remember it. Involve me in the process. Involve me in an activity. Let me do it hands-on and kinesthetically. That's how I learn. That's how a lot of students learn, and that's why integrating simulation into our e-learning platform is really, really important. Let me give an example. Let's say we're teaching fluid power or fluids in a science course, or we're teaching pneumatics. We can go through and open up engineering applications. We can scroll down to fluid power. We can op open up fluid power, find the simulator that relates to fluid power, 
and up comes our virtual pneumatics trainer. And using that virtual pneumatics trainer, we can have students do exercises, we can have them build pneumatic circuits, they can learn about regulators and valves and pressure, shuttle valves, um, cylinders, learn all about pneumatics in a hands-on environment using an exercise that the student has selected and assigned to that student. And that's available not just for fluid power, there's a whole simulated city where we can understand the power of energy. There's a whole section on temperature and understanding temperature in a hands-on interactive manner. How about a virtual microscope for our students that can't be in their science classrooms? There's our fluid power trainer. There's a simulator that, shows that teaches students the value of looking at different modes of logistics when they're moving products around the globe. So all kinds of integrated simulation opportunities, literally hundreds of those that we can align to the course that we're teaching and provide a simulated experience for the student outside the classroom or for that matter inside the classroom. The other thing that's important is to track completion and give students credit for their work. So we can track which courses the students took, how long it took them to get through it, how long they were in the content, um, how they performed on the assessment, whether or not they did the virtual skills, how they performed on the final quiz or the final test for the coursework. So we can track completion. We can give students credit for the work that they're doing. That makes the teacher's job much, much simpler in terms of take, keeping track of work that students are doing and grading their work, especially when they're outside the classroom. Here is a don't. We don't want to teach students the same way and teach every student the same way. Some students learn by reading. Some of them may have learn by having the content read to them. By the way, the content in many of these platforms is available in, in many languages, including Spanish. Uh, we, one of the things we find with students for whom English is a second language is that they will go through the content and have it read to them and their English skills will actually improve over time. And of course, for our hands-on kinesthetic students, simulation is really, really important. Now, here's the thing. We can take this and make it as specific as we like, not just to the class, not just to the coursework, but literally all the way down to the individual student. So if we have a student who is high flying and moving ahead, or we have a student that's struggling a little bit more with a certain portion of the content, we can create custom content for those students to continue to challenge them or to bring them along with the rest of the classroom. So the final do, and this is as salesy as we get, is pick the right partner. That's our team at ATS Lab Midwest. About half of those people are former educators. The other half are people that came out of the world of technology. We understand technology, we understand education, for that matter, we understand advanced manufacturing. But the important thing is to pick the right partner. Before you're even a customer, the first time you call us, you'll be si assigned to your own resource. That is somebody that will, at absolutely no cost to you, coach you through the resources that are available to you, coach you through what might be the best fit for your students, set up demo access, explain your options, help work within your budget. So that's step one. Step two is choose the right license model. We have schools that have entire site licenses for an entire school. We have school districts that, that purchase entire licenses for the entire district. We have other teachers that may have five students going through e-learning and they buy five individual seats. We have an option for every budget, an option for every objective. It's a question of choosing the right license model. Number three, align to your course outcomes. Again, it's our job to align our e-learning to your course, not the other way around. We have people who are experts on the LMS, experts on the content. We will align our content to your course outcomes in whatever way you want us to. Number four, customization. And so we'll work with you to customize the course to a student, work with you to customize the course to your individual course structure, and finally train you on that learning management system. It's incredibly easy, um, but we will spend time training you on the LMS to make sure that you can do all those things that we just showed how to do and more once you're using the learning management system in one of our platforms. So really, really quick review. The 10 do's and don'ts of K-12 e-learning. Number one, do your homework. Number two, don't make your students sit through hours of online lectures. Give them options, give them experiences. Don't think that e-learning replaces or replaces the teacher. It does not. It enhances the work the teacher is already doing. Do is start with course sections on your end and align accordingly. You should align the e-learning to the course, not necessarily the course to the e-learning. Number five, create custom courses. So once we've aligned the, the content, we can customize that course to whatever level we wish. Do leverage crosswalks to standards. Do integrate simulation, especially for your hands-on kinesthetic learners. Do track completion and give students credit for the work that they're doing. 
don't teach every student the same way. We can customize the experience all the way down to the individual student level. And finally, whoever you work with, whether that's us or not, pick the right partner, pick somebody that can help add value. So I really appreciate the time that folks were able to spend with us this afternoon. I hope we kept to our promise to keep this short and sweet and deliver a ton of content. If you have questions, if you are interested, info at labmidwest.com is a great way to do that. And finally, everyone is welcome to join labmidwest.com. That's our website. You can go in there and request more information about just about anything. So with that, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and be safe.